My name is Jordan Valdiviez. I am the uh, president of the John B. and Lillian E. Neff College of Business and Innovation uh, alumni affiliate. Uh, on behalf of the affiliate, I'd like to just thank and welcome uh, you all to this annual Dean's event where we kind of talk about things going on in the university, in the College of Business. Um, and we'll also be hearing from, uh, obviously, Dean Bayless, as well as hearing from the AVP of Alumni Engagement, Billy Pierce, as well as Jim Smith, who is the uh, College of Business and Innovation Distinguished Alumni who we're awarding today for just recognizing our like, really, really cool alumni that are out there, and he's going to be sharing some words with us today. Um, I'd also like to mention that Dr. Gregory Postel uh, will be invested as the 18th president of the University of Toledo tomorrow. Uh, the ceremony takes place in the morning um, at 10 a.m. in Nitschke Auditorium on the engineering side of campus um, and is open to the public. So if you are uh, available and interested in attending that, that's tomorrow. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce Billy Pierce, Associate VP of Alumni Engagement, and he's going to come up and share a few words with us. Let's give him a hand. T-O-L. It's homecoming. T-O-L. Thank you. Thank you. Jordan, thank you for the, uh, the introduction. Um, it's good to be here today. What a difference a year makes. Um, while it was great to see you all on screen, it's much nicer to see you in person. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for allowing me to stand before you. I plan to be fairly brief. Um, I will ask for your forgiveness now um, because I have to jet out of here to get back to campus as we prepare for um, what will be an exciting weekend homecoming, um, celebrating our awardees, Jim Smith, tomorrow night at the homecoming gala, Mark Arudia, our Blue Tea Award winner. So we've got a sold out house tomorrow night in the auditorium, but I've got to get back to finish my scripts and tests and all that stuff. So please forgive me ahead of time. I'm honored to serve as the Associate Vice President of Alumni Engagement. I am no stranger to the university. Uh, I started as a student in 94, uh, college of, uh, excuse me, University College graduate in 99. Uh, came back and completed the Executive MBA program in 2009, uh, EMBA Class 13. So a proud uh, business graduate standing before you. Um, but it's, it's really great to, to stand in this role. And, and for those who know Dan, knew Dan Savick, know Dan Savick, pretty big shoes to fill. But uh, I learned a long time ago, you, you surround yourself with great people like Paul Smith, who's somewhere in the room or out in the hallway, and you get out of their way and let them do their job. And uh, we go forward from, from there. I have spent most of my career at the university um, prior to coming to the alumni engagement team. Uh, I was in enrollment um, from the time I was a student as a tour guide all the way up through two and a half years ago when I came over to the foundation. Spent the vast majority of my career at Toledo, ING. See a lot of familiar faces, work with Rick when his kids were coming here from uh, New York. And so that was really my passion, but it's such a great opportunity to think about recruiting future Rockets, and now I get to work with Rocket alumni. So I've come the, the full spectrum from a career standpoint. Um, university has been an amazing, amazing, um, piece of my life. I've been here all of my adult life, but it's really been a family affair for, for me and, and my family. But what we do here in the Alumni Association is what you're surrounded by now, putting together programs, working with our deans and our colleges to bring alumni back to campus, keep you connected with each other, to build that strong affinity and rocket network um, around the world. 169,000 plus living alumni around the world and I will tell you from personal experience, there's not a place that I go outside of this area when I'm wearing rocket gear that someone doesn't say, go Rockets or TOL. So if you do not have your rocket gear, please make sure you get it, make sure you wear it and wear it proudly because if I see you in an airport and you don't have it on, I might call you out. But we have an exciting weekend um, ahead, uh, full of activity and it's, it's, again, it's, some folks may call it work, it's not work when you're, when you're enjoying it. So as Jordan mentioned, we start off tomorrow with the investiture of our 18th president, Dr. Gregory Postal, but actually technically homecoming started today. So 
Uh, you all are actually not the first event. Law had a virtual event this morning at, I believe, uh, 8 o'clock. Um, uh, Mike, was it 8 o'clock you guys were online? 8 o'clock. So technically, I think Law gets the award for the uh, kickoff of homecoming, but certainly having this event here um, is a wonderful opportunity to get our business graduates together. But then also thinking about tomorrow, the investiture. We have our uh, homecoming gala tomorrow night at 6.30 in the auditorium. Homecoming parade, 8 o'clock, bright and early Saturday morning. Parade route will still go through Old Orchard like it has in the years past. Pre-game party in the Kester Pavilion, 9 o'clock to noon. Kickoff at noon against Northern Illinois where we will walk away with a rocket victory. And then for some of you may not know, we actually host another event on Sunday for our Golden Alumni Society. So for those who graduated 50 years or more, we celebrate and welcome them back to, to, to campus. So there's so much going on on campus, so many positive things. We're still very excited about the renaming of the college to the John B. and Lillian E. Neff College of Business and Innovation. Our faculty and students are leading groundbreaking research. If you haven't been paying attention to the news, please, please take a look at that because we're leading the country in so many different areas. Um, exemplary performance by our student athletes in the classroom. And we hear a lot about what they do on the field, but we are leading the conference, and I would say one of the best darn athletic, um, athletic departments in the country is right here at the University of Toledo, and our student athletes are proving it on and off the field. Positive financial growth at the University of Toledo Medical Center. The embracing and celebration of diversity and culture on our campus as we think about how, what a broad representation our students have, and it really, we are working hard to create a welcoming environment for, for all of our students. And then finally, I'll tell you, the Alumni Association is in, is in good standing. Uh, we took a little bit of a hit last year with COVID from a membership standpoint, but we are rebounding, we are strong, we are getting back to our events, virtual and otherwise. And so I appreciate your support of the Alumni Association. I appreciate your support of our university, and I appreciate your support as a graduate of the College of Business and Innovation, um, your support of our college. So, I'm going to get out of your way, but before I do, I have the pleasure of introducing the person that leads our Neff College of Business and Innovation. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ann Bayless. I am. <laughs> well, first of all, welcome and thank you all for coming. Uh, I know the law school had their event this morning, but guess what? It was virtual, so. Um, you know, so what? Uh, no, and we usually buy with them for space in this building and we didn't have to do that this year. And I'm really glad that we were able to get together because it's, um, you know, as you know how rare that is, but it'll become increasingly uh, more popular. And I, again, I want to echo um, Billy's uh, comments about your generosity. We actually did have a record year of fundraising, um, the Neff gift notwithstanding, for scholarships and for programs, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today, how we are putting your contributions and support to work, and how we are moving forward in our research, in our teaching, in our scholarship, and our students advancing out into the world. And hopefully, um, you know some of those students. You were some of those students. So welcome. And thanks also, before I get started, to, to all the people who helped put this together, Paul Smith, um, John Anderson, Billy Pierce for coming, Maria schmalz -Reed, who's here, uh, Jordan Valdiviez, who's been leading the alumni affiliate, and Sandy Whitman from my office, who have all helped to make today and this week um, a really special event. And I look forward, as you, as you do too, to hearing from our distinguished alumnus. You might have heard him in a, in a virtual uh, town hall that we had earlier this year. We were trying everything we could. Everybody was, right? It was virtual, it was hybrid, it was face-to-face, -face, it was all over the place. So again, thanks for helping kick off the homecoming weekend. Um, and we have examples of what we've been up to in the past few months. So I'm going to share, um, whoops, went the wrong way. I'm going to share that we're back in business and we have um, you might have read, you might have seen, we uh, keep on a dashboard uh, the safety precautions that we take at the university and then also um, the cases, the, the positivity rate and so on. Obviously that's going down over time, but that was thanks to everybody being very compliant. And I might add with a, a physician at the helm of the university, there was extra special attention to that and a, and a vice provost who's a public health professor. Um, 
We pivoted just like everybody else and we continue to offer classes in every kind of modality. We've got uh, a lot of people working on a new budget model that we're gonna be launching in the next fiscal year that's keeping us on our toes. Um, the president did put us to work, uh, even when he was interim president, with a lot of working groups and task forces to tackle some big issues on campus. Uh, those related to the hospital, to the budget, to the reorganization of certain parts of the campus like HR, uh, diversity issues on campus, and so on. So uh, people were really mobilized wherever they were, whether they were in their basement uh, or in the office or you know somewhere in a closet at home, we were still working really hard. So um, things are getting done and um, we have some new leadership positions on campus filled, so people are, are still coming and going and we're getting new talent. Um, and celebrating the talent that retired or, or left during the pandemic. And um, I just wanna mention this phrase community engagement because the university is technically classified as a community engaged university. And I can tell you that the College of Business and Innovation, the John B. and Lillian E. Neff College of Business and Innovation um, is probably one of the best examples of that. We've got Family Business Center people here. Um, we have Schmidt School people here. We have um, programs coming out of our Business Career Programs Office that, again, I'll share with you, um, that are really doing great work in addition to what we do in the classroom. So one of the things we brought back um, was our NEF sponsored Jumpstart program. This is something the NEFs um, contributed to back in the 90s. It invites a small group of students to come before school starts in the fall and get comfortable with the campus and with our college um, and just what, what uh, college life might be like, what a classroom looks like, what the technology looks like, maybe get to know some other students. Um, and do some fun things, meet people from the business community. They went on tours. Some of you hosted them. Um, we're really grateful for that. They get a jump start into their college career and they usually um, progress very successfully from there on. So uh, we're thankful for that. Uh, the YES program is something we've been fundraising for in the past couple years. This was initiated by a faculty member who's since retired, Selena Griswold. Um, it's Young Executive Scholars. It is uh, a collaboration with the Jones Leadership Academy in town here and soon to be other TPS schools, Toledo Public Schools, to in the same way introduce students to um, some business etiquette, to some uh, college seeking um, activities, to um, meet people from the university and just understand what that that bridge from high school to college looks like. And um, that has been very um, positively received by our, our donors and we really appreciate all the support that's going into that program. Again, building a pipeline, building a bridge to the community, staying community engaged. We have the Clar Leadership Academy you might have heard of, which is uh, uh, the the benefactor of whom is an alumnus, Stephen Klar, and our own Clint Longenecker uh, was instrumental in really building this program over the years. This is for undergraduates from across the campus um, who are nominated uh, by their deans, and there are over 100 of them this year who participate in typically weekend activities that are um, service oriented, leadership skill building, extracurricular again, they all do it on their own time. We have two faculty members leading that this year and it has a, a partner program for graduate students called the um, Advanced Leadership Academy and that this year has been underwritten by ProMedica. So we're working with them on um, some curriculum related to healthcare. So we're excited about that. We also have uh, engaged with a little more active enrollment uh, and admissions activities. We had over the summer and continuing into the fall some open houses in the college. We have faculty and staff coming in on Saturdays to promote our programs and to um, do you know, small activities in different classrooms in our action learning labs and to introduce students to all the different majors that we have and to our faculty and facilities. So that's been successful. Parents are welcome to come to that too and they get to hear and listen to the faculty and our, our staff about what's available to their, um, to their children. 
We had two very recent golf outings to, um, to raise money for scholarships. One was from the alumni affiliate, and that was uh, just a terrific day at uh, Stone Oak. And then another one a month later, the, the first one that the Family Business Center had, and that was very successful as well. Um, so we thank you for participating in that or helping to sponsor that. That's been um, sort of a real fun way to get together and, and help out our college. Just last week, we had one of our two business uh, career fairs. Uh, this is strictly for our students in the, in the College of Business and Innovation. The university hosts others for other majors, but we had over 100 employers there. Maybe some of you, I'm assuming. Uh, yes, I do know that. Um, and uh, some were virtual interviews, and, but mostly face-to-face, -face, and over 550 students participated in that. So our students are in demand. They're getting jobs. Our placement rate is over 90%. Um, the pandemic really didn't slow us down. We're so proud of that. There was a global supply chain conference that we hosted last year virtually in December, and then another conference that Paul Hong from the IOTM department and Dr. Miggy Hopkins from the management department co-hosted um, this past month uh, on neopopulism. So we're, we're working with our partners worldwide and doing, you know, continuing research and conferencing virtually. We have many student organizations in the college and uh, quite a few of them are award winning. So you might have been a member of Beta Alpha Psi or Pi Sigma Epsilon. Uh, Beta Gamma Sigma also just received an award as well, a chapter honor as well. So again, despite the pandemic, despite being virtual, the student orgs continue to do good work, do a lot of service activity, raise funds and um, represent our college in the most positive way. We had two faculty who achieved um, promotions and uh, Katie Johnson tenured as an uh, associate professor in marketing. Um, Dr. Dana Holly, our Allen Berry endowed professor of accounting was promoted to full professor this past year. Ellen Pullins, you might know, Dr. Pullins was uh, named a specialist, a Fulbright specialist, which means that she has significant expertise in an area that when demanded somewhere in the world, she will be called upon to help uh, a university or a program with that expertise. And she happens to be internationally known uh, in the field of sales, part of our Schmidt School of Professional Sales. She and Katie Johnson from the previous slide, Deirdre Jones, myself, um, and several students are working on a grant right now from 3M that they've sponsored some research about um, what kinds of um, pathways can we offer to underrepresented minority students to, to attain a sales career. So what can we do to encourage sales careers for our underrepresented minority students. We're conducting that research here in Toledo, in the school system and in our own university. And among alumni, so you might get, you might get tapped for that, you never know. Um, Nancy Snow in our accounting department uh, was named a distinguished lecturer and these are, you know, these are handed out very, very rarely uh, once a year, but not every, every college gets one. And Nancy, of course, we're so proud of to have been named a distinguished university lecturer, she gets that title for life. So uh, we're glad, we hope to keep her for life. Uh, we have some new leadership in the college. Bashar is here. Uh, Bashar Gamo has joined me as the uh, Interim Associate Dean of Graduate Programs and Research. And I'm so thrilled because he has been basically doing that job even before he was named. So I, <laughs> I'm so happy that I've got his assistance in a formal way. We have some, uh, new leadership in the college too, in the departments. Um, and we have some vice chairs as well. Some, some decided to team up. So that is a relatively new arrangement and we like that. Um, many hands make light work, right? Um, and then finally, uh, we've got new programs. We've got new things cooking. Um, I just came back from a, a dean's conference, a business dean's conference where it was presented that you know our competition is not other universities now. It's it's um, it's for profit and other organizations that are building their own educational arms. And so, um, you know, PwC has teamed up uh, and created an accounting curriculum, for example. So I mean, we we're 
we're actually competing with some of our own partners, um, which is a little unusual. So the answer to that is get going, get creative, um, offer programs in ways that meet people's needs and where they are. And so we do have, while we always had offered our MBA in a very flexible format, we do have a separate program that is 100% uh, online. Um, we have some new certificates. Some of this information is on your table as well in the materials there. We have, uh, you might be, uh, have heard about our cannabis management certificates. That's an undergraduate and a graduate certificate in partnership with the College of Pharmacy. And we're about to also host a boot camp that uh, will be non-credit. That'll be in April of next year um, and include a virtual component as well as a face-to-face -face component. Um, our Women in Business Leadership Student Organization is growing rapidly and getting a lot of interaction from um, our alumni. And so we're inviting uh, our female alumni to participate with them. Um, and then we have some transfer agreements with schools in the area that we've either kept up or re, uh, renewed. Um, this Owens and Saddleback. Saddleback is in California. What are we doing partnering up with Californians? They don't have enough space in their four-year institutions for their graduates from their community college system. And so they're looking for options, and they're looking for online options. And they may have done their community college or associate's degree um, online, and they want to continue. And so we, the nursing school has reached out, College of Arts and Letters, and the College of Business and Innovation to articulate programs across the country so that those students can seamlessly uh, achieve a four-year degree online and it'll be a UT degree. So we're happy about that. Um, we have just hired, the university has, some recruiters to um, recruit international students. You might know we do have some partnerships already with schools in China and India. We used to have one with a school in Egypt that's um, interested in repartnering with us. We get in inquiries all the time from around the world. People know Toledo and they are interested in working with us. Um, and I will say that our enrollment did suffer in the last year and a half, two years, because of a, a decline in international student enrollment. They couldn't get here. We pivoted and taught our partner school online in the middle of the night. We met them where they were. We taught them uh, at their convenience. Um, but they do like to see our professors face to face, and so we will restart that when everything is safe to, to return to that model. But we also have pipeline programs within the college, uh, or within the university, I should say, with other programs from other um, colleges. The, the FarmD program is a FarmD MBA. We have a JD MBA. We um, have one with the engineering school, we have one with disability studies, so we encourage students to take a business minor and then from there uh, move on to seamlessly to a one-year MBA after that. So for those in the audience who are from those other schools, I'm encouraging you to look into that. So um, that is my update. I hope that that's satisfied. If you have questions or um, Anything that you'd like to know about further, feel free to contact me. I'm happy to discuss. Um, we're going to move on now to uh, the main event, which is finally the hosting of our distinguished alumnus, Jim Smith. And I will give you a little bit of a bio here. Um, and again, you may have seen him at our town hall. I think that was back in January, was it? Yeah, yeah. And it was delightful. But here he is in the flesh. So we're so excited with his wife, Nancy. Um, Jim Smith, a native of the Detroit area, first studied at Central Michigan University, where he graduated with a degree in chemistry and math in 1977. He would then go on to study at the University of Toledo, where he would earn his MBA and graduate in 1981. After graduation, he, became, he began working as a film buyer, first with General Cinema and then with United Artists Cinemas. He moved to a position with DreamWorks Pictures, where he would become the Western Division sales manager. So see, even a math major can, be, can get into sales. This is very exciting. Uh, I love it. Uh, he would then move to Paramount Pictures as the senior vice president of worldwide operations and currently serves as the executive vice president for general sales, manager for domestic theatrical sales. In his personal life, 
Jim and his wife Nancy, married since 1984, are proud parents to children Drew and Dana. Jim volunteers his time with Will Rogers Motion Pictures Pioneers Foundation, the Covenant House of California, and via Community Days through Paramount Pictures. He enjoys participating as a mentor in the company mentoring program. When time permits, he very much enjoys golf, sports, reading, and politics. Please welcome your distinguished alumnus, Jim Smith. Thank you very much. Um, my name tag keeps coming off, but I think everybody gets Jim Smith. I don't think that's a real problem. Um, Maria, Maria asked me to, uh, to be the distinguished alumni, and I thought, this was last year, and I thought, well, COVID times, weird things happen, <laughs> right? And so here I am. Um, I, I want to say how proud I am to be, for this group, how proud I am to be an alumni of, of Toledo. Um, you know, I, I have a boss who once told me he couldn't beat the Midwest out of me, and I take that as a compliment. Uh, it's so comfortable to come back here and, and see everybody and to, I have family still in Detroit area, but just, just it feels like home um, when I come here. Um, I'm also proud to be a graduate uh, with an MBA from the College of Business and Innovation. Um, I'm proud, very proud that we have a woman dean. That is one of the best things. I immediately text my two daughters and then my oldest one who has a business degree, I says, do your school have a woman dean? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, you're welcome. Uh, I, I will tell you, they said when you come up here and you can say a few things about you know, what you enjoyed or how, how you fit into the school or how it went and, and your, your memories of the school. And what I remember is there's certain things that prepared me and um, in the MBA program to go on and do what I did. Um, and the one big thing that I remember that I, I would like to, and I, I know we have uh, some young uh, people here not yet graduated, and the one thing I want to remind everybody is, is what they have to do as a school to is fit. I had a teacher one time, he, 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 uh, a management professor, I can remember the auditorium we were in, I can remember the teacher. I can remember everything about this place. And he walked up and he wrote FIT on the board. And everybody's like, okay, what acronym? You know, fun in Toledo. Um, what, what does this all stand for? And as we went around for like 20 minutes and everybody tried to guess, he came and he finally said, no, it just means fit. And you have to fit with the company you're with. And the one thing about the University of Toledo, I always fit here, and that made me excel. And then when I got out, I, I took a different route that a lot of people did, you know, uh, a degree in chemistry and math, and then an MBA in finance. So of course, I went into the uh, entertainment business, uh, you know, buying film. I mean, it's logical, right? Um, actually, it was 1981, and, and if people remember Detroit in 81, it was not a lot of jobs. It was one of the first downturns. It wasn't shortly when Chrysler took the money for the first time and got bailed out by the government. So um, I moved south. I went to Jacksonville with a company called General Cinema. And buying film means we had owned so many theaters and the distributors like Paramount, Warner Brothers, uh, Disney, they sold film to us and I scheduled the films, what played in what theater around the country. Had an area grow. Ended up in LA with that and then I got on the distribution side with what was called DreamWorks Pictures, which was Spielberg, Katzenberg, Geffen. And I did the opposite. I sold it to the theaters. And after a while, we got bought by, DreamWorks got bought by Paramount. And when it got bought by Paramount, all the people in operations left. And I'm like, OK, one of my best friends was running operations. And I saw a huge opportunity. The opportunity was, the whole industry was changing to digital, which means we no longer carried around 35 millimeter prints that weighed 60 pounds, of, okay? We sent theaters a hard drive, and it was in that transition. So I'm like, I'll do that. I actually made him a deal. I said, I'll get in operations, help you out if I have digital cinema under me. He's like, okay, done. Uh, 
and then I went from there, and a little while later, we got operations uh, overall worldwide, and um, I ended up negotiating satellite contracts around Europe uh, to, to deliver our product, going down to Brazil uh, with the MPAA because they were, they were putting sign language and hearing impaired on the tracks, and which is interesting. In Brazil, they actually try to put sign language on the screen as you're watching a film, um, yeah, which is kind of weird, but I mean, you, on TV, but they have these, these programs, they can do it, and it syncs up with the projector, and, and so it was very interesting, but I found myself with the MPAA talking to them because they wanted to do it in a way we didn't think that made our film secure. Uh, you know, so there was different places around the world. The point is, is, you know, that was because I was prepared by this university to do what I do. And that is the best part. Um, I, I, so then I, I can't tell you how much I felt comfortable all the time. I prepared, I knew my material, and I always had a business mind no matter what part of it was in and how to, how to tackle problems, how to go forward. But that was because I was here. Math, that math doesn't really help you with that that much, to, to be honest. Um, but it, it was good to have math. So then, you know, um, and the other thing I'm proud of, it has given me a base for not only uh, for Nancy and I to raise a great family, but to give back a little bit to the university. And that, that's one of the most important things. I remember going to a, a meeting, a guy who gives a lot of his time, Jeffrey Kanzenberg, and he came and he told, told us all as we, we did a little thing for this variety club and he was telling students and he told students he learned that from Kurt Douglas. You, don't, you haven't lived until you give. And it's so true. And that's what we, we all can do. And then the, the other things, I, I, I just, you know, um, Paul Smith didn't limit me on what I could say, so sorry. I'm gonna, gonna say whatever. Um, the, the, if there's a couple things I could tell people that through my career and for the people that are still going through their career or about to start it or whatever, it, and we'll see the number one thing to do that I've learned because we changed from I went from sales to, to operations and digital, you know, from 35 million mil to digital, and now they have this little thing called streaming. Uh, I've always been in theatrical, and you know, four years ago, nobody would let us go day and date with streaming, meaning the pictures played in the theater and on Netflix or somewhere at the same time. We have Paramount Plus. That, that's called the window. We kept it for 90 days, and then everybody had it. Um, that shrunk to nothing because of COVID, which was gonna happen anyway. But people in, our play, in my team and stuff, a lot of people panicked. And I'm like, don't panic. Just find your place and change. Embrace the change. And all through my career, all I did was try to embrace the change. We went from DreamWorks to Paramount. It's like, that's a change. So what? Embrace it. How could I get in? I thought, operations is open. That's good. And I like it. And next thing you know, I'm you know, doing things that I never dreamed of doing. Um, so I, I hope the school teaches, continues to teach change. I hope that the school also teaches something else, and that is continues to learn and teach that, you know, teach the business people to run companies, not just to increase stockholder value. Doesn't have to be mutually exclusive, but many times it is, and that to me ruins companies when they only concentrate on stockholder value. I, I, I felt like I was prepared to run a company run operations, not just to increase stockholder value. And I hope we continue to teach that because a good, a good ran company is gonna do the stockholder value anyway. Um, I think another point I, I'd like to make is, um, you know, uh, is that you can't emphasize enough, I think, that to continue your education, no matter what, what you think's going on, um, it, it's constantly changing. I just wish I could instill in everybody just, you know, it's like real estate, real estate is location, location. I think business is, you know, really learn, learn, learn. Just keep learning as you go. And that helps you embrace change and, and not to be afraid of it. Um, you know, uh, I seem like I had one more point and I don't know what that point was. And, um, and that's the other thing you got older and to brace changes. I don't really care if I missed a point. <laughs> you know, when you were young, you did, but now I don't, I don't care. Uh, 
Um, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, I, I just want to, you know, say one other thing about the university that I really love and why I'm standing here is, is two things. One, because they reached out to me and I happened to be at a time to, to give back and, and look at the world a little differently because my kids were raised, my position and so on, and, and we could. Uh, the other thing I, I wanted to point out is I'm so proud of this university, of what they mean to this town. That's so important. I feel like it's a, uh, not all universities invest in their town like this one does, and I think that's what's so impressive about it. The Family Business Center is just something I just love the concept, love the idea. And the other thing uh, that uh, uh, Nancy and I really uh, back is the human trafficking department here, or that, that program, because it, it's, it's so good. Um, I do remember my other point. There you go. You talk long enough, you remember stuff. Um, no, I, I think the other point was that I read um, a, a thing from the Family Business Center, there's a seminar coming up, I think Agile Management, Agile Project Management coming up. I read that and one line was in there about managers then taking on leadership's role. And the thing I've learned most is so many people know their function. They know accounting, they know the law, they know whatever their individual function is, but they do not know how to manage. And it, it's a skill and I hope we keep teaching kids that management part as well as their function because running a company is really management so is important. Uh, at Paramount we've had our up and down and you see the bad management and you see the good management and after a while you know it when you see it. But it really has, you know, managing the studio and at the top has a lot more to do with than just making movies. Making movies is an important part and you have to have that skill but you need to have people to do that for you, trust them, and that's management. And not everybody does that. So um, I think that's everything I would like to say, um, other than the fact that um, I'm happy to be one of the living 169,000 <laughs> <laughs> alumni. <laughs> I thought that was interesting to put it, way to put it. Um, I'm happy to be living. Uh, the, the other part, um, he said, um, Somebody was, the, him or somebody said, there's 6,000, Rick, you told me, there's 6,000 in LA, right? Then I just want to know, why am I the only guy with a rocket license plate? <laughs> we got to get some more rocket license plate around it. But anyway, th thank you very much for taking my time. It's been great to be here and, and uh, uh, especially to meet Maria and, and the Dean who we've talked several times. And I do want to say how proud I am to be a rocket how proud I am what this school taught me and what it's able to, to do during a career, which as a kid growing up in Detroit in my neighborhood, I never dreamed of doing. So thank you very much.